Thank you very much. And so uh, we are now going to hear from our keynote speaker today, and that is Commissioner Ileana Ivanova, who's the European Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education, and Youth. And let me pass the floor again to uh, Michel, who is going to do a short introduction. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, it's working. Great, so I had prepared uh, a 10 minute speech, but of course we're short on time, so I, I'll, I'll cut it very short. Um, I just want to say a warm welcome to uh, Ms. Ivanova, uh, who's been in the job, uh, I think two months now, uh, roughly, a bit longer, uh, to make uh, time in your busy schedule. We've seen how busy it is. And um, maybe one short remark, because uh, we noticed that in your hearing at the parliament, you mentioned that a lot more should be communicated on the, um, on the role of the EIT family, uh, a special partnership with the European Union. And of course, we really liked and enjoyed it. And we might like to extend, let's say, our support in your mission as well, uh, because we think we are not only about policy making, but we are about delivery, to, thanks to our unique uh, ecosystem and structure. And we're really looking forward to working with you God knows that we have a lot of topics to, uh, to cover uh, in Europe. And um, again, uh, looking forward to work together with you on the collective future of uh, food. So Madam, the floor is yours. Thank you very much indeed uh, for the kind words. Uh, it's not two months, but a little bit more than one month. And I'm really eager also and looking forward to, to working with all of you. Dear colleagues, dear friends, uh, it is an honor to be here today at the Future Food Conference uh, to address such a diverse community of stakeholders, academics, innovators, social entrepreneurs, industry players, farmers, policymakers, and consumers. All of you have come together because our food systems need a strategic overhaul. Today, food accounts for nearly one third of global greenhouse gas emissions. The way our food systems are organized has a profound effect, impact on our biodiversity and on our soil. We need, obviously, to green our food system while ensuring the food security. And these challenges require an encompassing approach that is clear both in the farm to fork strategy and the food 2030 RNI policy framework. It is not a task for a few players, but for society as a whole. And that is precisely where EIT Food, this community, you come in. My goal as a commissioner for innovation, research, education, culture, and youth is to support you to do what you do best, grow an ecosystem that reflects the passion I see here, translating it into concrete solutions for our society. This leads me to my first point. We need to bring different players together if we want to have a system-wide impact. Stemming from the new European innovation agenda we just launched last week in Plovdiv, our new initiative on regional innovation valleys for bioeconomy and food systems, for instance. Our goal is there to unlock the bioeconomy potential for our regions for both sustainable and circular bio-based value chains and innovative food system technologies. Here, of course, the work of the EIT is extremely relevant. Not only you're connecting the whole innovation chain from higher education institutions to startups and large industry players, you are also connecting them across our regions. Your network is of over 20 EIT food regional hubs. This provides targeted support to entrepreneurs innovators in the field of agriculture and food technology through acceleration programs, startup incubators, or education, training, and reskilling programs. These EIT food regional hubs provide the focal point of the EIT food activities in the regions on the ground. They represent a key instrument 
for a place-based approach to innovation. And this leads me to the importance of working with the higher education sector. My second point, human capital is our most valuable commodity in this transition, and we must invest in people. From the start, the stated goal of the EIT is to enhance the link between innovators, researchers, and learners. This is a fundamental point of convergence between the new European innovation agenda and the European strategy for universities. The European Universities Initiative promotes nas transnational living labs, incubators for student entrepreneurs working across sectors, disciplines, developing critical thinking and problem solving. These alliances are deeply engaged in developing good practices for the whole of the higher education sector to employ, educate, a new generation of entrepreneurs. But we need to make sure that these good practices reach the whole of the higher education ecosystem. Take, for example, UniGreen, one of our European university alliances, precisely dedicated to greener agriculture, biotech, and life sciences. It brings together partners from Iceland to Bulgaria, from Portugal to Finland. Here we are connecting stakeholders with the knowledge and talent they need to continue progressing towards our ambitious objectives literally across Europe. In parallel, we continue developing one of the most ambitious actions of the new European innovation agenda the Deep Tech Talent Initiative, aiming to train one million people in deep tech fields by 2025. For this ambitious goal, the EIT is mobilizing its network of over 3,400 partners and over 70 EIT community hubs across Europe. And the EIT food education portfolio is well represented in this effort. Beyond the structuring of the food ecosystems and the reinforcement of the higher education and skills, we also need to invest in research and innovation to support the transition of the food system. My third point. Here you certainly all know that beyond EIT food, Horizon Europe also provides dedicated support for collaborative research and innovation in the area of food, bioeconomy, natural resources, agriculture, and the environment within the cluster six. Our Food 2030 policy framework is guiding this funding, leading to over 100 collaborative EU projects across in Europe and Africa. Let me give you an example. We have the data for food projects supported by 10 million euros to develop a data economy for sustainable food systems. It brings together stakeholders from across the EU to improve the way we understand different food value chains across the entire EU. This knowledge will in turn lead to more informed decision making from policymakers but also from stakeholders. Projects like this can have a huge impact on our ability to innovate. New data could enable new startups, empowering new entrepreneurs to take yet another step as we transform our food systems. We also have the EU mission. I know the missions are recently very debated, but our mission, a soil deal for Europe, is one that I invite you to get even more involved so Europe can lead the transition towards healthy soils by 2030. EIT Food just signed the Soil Mission Manifesto. We need to continue reaching out to all types of stakeholders as well as individuals 
to sign the manifesto and become part of a community that cares for soil, that cares for our future. We also need private investors, and I've been repeating this every now and then, and EIT Food plays an important role also here. Matching selected startups with agri-food investors embedded in this community. EIT Foods cooperation with Peak Bridge is a great example in this regard. Dear innovators, the measure of our success will always be the success of your ventures, your innovations, your solutions. To borrow from a metaphor that uh, will resonate with the many of you here, we can provide the seeds, the sunlight, the water, but the soil upon which they germinate needs to be supported by a whole ecosystem, by all of you and your collaboration. Thank you all for being here, for all your work, for building this ecosystem. I hope to see you all this December at the Food 2030 conference in Brussels. And of course, I wish you inspiring discussions and opportunities for new partnerships. Thank you very much.